The subject matter that we will be addressing today is how to deal with dissatisfied customers and in so doing, being able to win them back again. Although I'm sure that you feel uncomfortable with the thought of one of your clients being dissatisfied with some or other aspect of your service, it does happen and your skill and integrity in handling this situation will display your true professionalism. Before we start, I think it is important to mention that the only way that an agent can reduce the incidence of dissatisfied clients is by being inordinately thorough and meticulous in his or her execution and explanation of every step in the real estate process, assuming absolutely nothing. These steps include your lead generation, capture and conversion of your prospects, your presentation to sellers, explaining leading RE and luxury portfolio to them, also explaining the property wise program and the property leader program. The question of the sole mandate, your marketing, the sale process, the process of securing finance, being able to explain the conveyancing process to people and the registration process, then moving and the handover, and then the implementation of the Customers for Life program with seller and purchaser. Note that it is also vital that the agent stays involved in the process on a daily basis, from mandate to registration and thereafter. So let's get straight into this topic. How many of you have had one of those on the left? Have you ever felt like the picture on the right? I don't know about you, but over the last years, I have noticed a steady increase in the number of customer complaints and dissatisfied customers. Some of the reasons for this, I believe to be, firstly, a greater awareness of the Consumer Protection Act, although there's also a great deal of misunderstanding about the CPA and its application in real estate. Take, for example, the difference between developers and property traders versus normal sales. Secondly, new inexperienced entrance into the property market with a consequent lack of understanding of the market, its workings and legalities. Another reason is agents not being thorough enough in explaining processes, documentation and legalities to sellers, buyers and renters. Fourthly, poor after sales service and communication by agents and attorneys. And fifthly, just unreasonable customers. Why angry customers should not be ignored by you or your company? According to the Accenture 2013 Global Consumer Pulse Survey, to find out information about a company's products and services, 71% of consumers rely on word of mouth communications. 48% use websites and review sites. 25% use customer reviews and comments from social media. Many people use two or even all three of these. The result is that you get negative online reviews, negative comments on social media and surveys, and negative word of mouth. The bottom line is you lose a client. And it's not just a question of losing a client, it's loss of revenue to you and your company for life, which is, by the way, not a sustainable business model. If you are ignoring customer complaints, you are actively killing your referral business, which is your future. Let us comprehend one fact right at the outset. 
Apologizing does not always mean that you're wrong and the other person is right. It just means that you value your relationship more than your ego. This is not your time for an ego trip. And it is not about who is right and who is wrong. It is about your future business. Twelve rules on dealing with the satisfied customers effectively. And I want us to understand that you must understand customers' frustration. Rule number one is don't fight back. Do not try and solve the problem yourself, but as soon as a problem arises, get the customer to a meeting at your offices with you and your principal or manager, and sometimes the company's attorney, as a matter of urgency. Secondly, do not make the mistake of thinking that the problem will solve itself or disappear. It won't. Thirdly, a happy customer tells three people how great you are. An unhappy customer uses forums like Hello Peter and social media platforms to tell hundreds of people how bad you are. And not only you, but Chaz Everett as well. The second rule is remain calm, polite, and professional, no matter what. Even if they are being grossly unfair to you, stay calm, polite, and professional. The third rule of dealing with the satisfied customers is don't take it personally. And I know that's easy to say, but always remember, it might not be your fault. They might be taking their anger and frustration out on you, but you might not be to blame. The fourth rule is try to understand the problem. You cannot solve a problem if you do not have a thorough grasp of the problem. So keep asking questions until you have this clear understanding of the client's problem or dissatisfaction. The fifth rule is be an active listener. Listen first and talk later. If you have two ears and one mouth, use the two ears first and the one mouth last. And please note, most people do not listen with the intent to understand, they listen with the intent to reply. You must listen with the intent to understand. The sixth rule, show respect and understanding. And you do that by actively empathizing. Remember saying that you understand does not mean that you agree that they have reason to be upset. It simply says, you understand. And you can say it in an easy sentence like, I can understand that you feel upset. The seventh rule is apologize. And you're only apologizing for the fact that the client has a problem. Notice that you are not admitting any wrongdoing, just apologizing for them being upset. And there are two examples on the slide for you to use. Restate the problem to them. Because restating the problem shows that you have been listening to them and that you understand. Notice in the sentence, so if I understand you correctly, your concern is. Use the word concern and not the word problem, since concern softens the issue. Note if there is more than one problem, deal with each problem separately. Rule number nine says exclude other potential problems. And you can do that quite simply by saying, if it were not for this issue, can I assume that you are otherwise satisfied? 
make sure that there are no additional hidden problems. If they say no, ask them what other issues they have, then restate all the issues to them and ensure that, the, and ensure that there are no more outstanding issues. Then ask them again if you find the solutions to them to these matters raised, whether they will be completely satisfied. Rule number 10 is employ all the necessary resources to find a solution. And that might mean engaging with your principal, your manager, the attorney, the mortgage origination person, whoever it is necessary to engage employ all resources to find a solution to their problem. Rule number 11, when a solution is found, inform the customer. Keep regular contact with the customer, preferably daily, until a solution, answer or compromise is found if one has not been found on the first meeting. Notice, if it was a Hello Peter complaint, Ask them to kindly put a positive correction on Hello Peter when once the problem has been resolved to the satisfaction of all parties. And remember to check later if they have put this correction on Hello Peter. Rule number 12, check that the customer is satisfied. This is referred to as a tie down question. Its purpose is to ensure you know you now have a happy and hopefully loyal customer again. When the problem has been solved satisfactory, take a few minutes on your own to relax after achieve, achieving closure on the matter. It's necessary just to regather yourself again. Here are 10 customer service quotes which I think all of us need to internalize. The first is from Stu Leonard, says the customer is always right. If the customer is ever wrong, reread number one. Every company's greatest asset is its customers, because without customers, there is no company. The purpose of every business is to get and keep customers. And Bill Gates says, your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. Good customer service costs less than bad customer service. And customers remember the service a lot longer then they remember the price. I particularly like these two. Unless you have 100% customer satisfaction, you must improve. And the customer experience is the next competitive battleground. Your customer doesn't care how much you know until he knows how much you care. And very importantly, people, customers don't expect you to be perfect. However, they do expect you to fix things when they go wrong, even if it is not your fault. Now, when it comes to dealing with problems, I'm sure many of us feel that we could put up a sign like this. I realize that on most occasions, we feel tense in these situations. Okay. But please note that customer service is your job and it is your business and your business can get blown away if you do not deal with customer complaints effectively and professionally.
I leave you with this thought. Thanks for your attendance today, and I hope that this will help you to retain more customers for life, where 60 to 70% of your business ultimately comes to you by referral. Thank you.